Hey everyone, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. In 2003, I fell in love with Metroid Prime. This was actually the first Metroid game I ever really played. On top of that, it was also the first 3D shooter I had ever tried too. In fact, I think this game is the reason why I use inverted controls. Now, fans have been asking for many years for a remaster of this wonderful game. And while the entire trilogy was eventually released on the Wii, we haven't ever seen a good twin stick style shooter version. Well, I'm happy to report that I've been messing around with the various options you have available when it comes to emulation of Metroid Prime. And I've put together a guide here that's gonna allow you to use both dual analog as well as keyboard and mouse controls when emulating this game. Now a couple caveats here, I think the best way to do this is by using the actual Metroid Prime trilogy available on the Wii, because it'll put all three games together and also naturally use widescreen, so it works out really well. So that Wii version is the one we're going to use today. And also because this makes use of a forked version of Dolphin called Prime Hack, you're going to be limited to Windows only, so you're going to be able to play this on a PC or a handheld PC, something like the Aya Neo Next. Anyway, this is actually a pretty easy setup guide here, we're going to knock it out in under 20 minutes. It's just a matter of knowing which files to use and where to put them. And so, without any further delay, let's jump into it. Okay, for starters, like I mentioned, you're going to want to have a ROM of the Metroid Prime Trilogy on the Wii. Now, you'll typically find this in an ISO file format or WFS like I have here. Either one's going to be fine. It is a pretty big file. I would expect it to be around 8 gigs altogether. Now, the first tool we're going to use is something called PrimeHack. Now, this thing is an ingenious fork of Dolphin. It's going to remap your controls for you and also have some unique graphic settings, too. What you'll want to do is go to the GitHub page, and then under the downloading section, you'll find two things you need to download. The first is going to be Microsoft Visual C++. And so you can just go through here and then download the x64 version. Once you have it downloaded, you want to run the installation. I've already run it on my computer, so as you can see here, I don't have an option to actually install it. So I don't have to do anything, we're good to go. Next, you're going to want to get something called PrimeHack Updater. This is a package that works with PrimeHack that will make sure that it's updated to the most recent version. So we'll download that too. And next, we're going to download the HD Interface Textures Pack. This is going to improve the menus and things like that, make them a little bit sharper. You're going to have two different options of downloading PNG or DDS files. And I recommend using the DDS files here. It's going to be about 100 megs altogether. Okay, so now we have our game file, the HD interface textures, and then the Prime Hack updater. And I would recommend putting all these into one folder and name it something like Metroid Prime. We're going to open up Prime Hack updater. It's going to then download Prime Hack and make sure that everything's set up. You're going to get this little window here. It's going to ask you to find the actual Metroid Prime trilogy game. So navigate to that folder we made and then pick the game. It'll also have two options here at the bottom, Run Games Immersively and then Portable Mode. You don't want to turn on Run Games Immersively because it's going to hide the Dolphin window, which we need to access later. But you definitely want to turn on Portable Mode. That's going to put all of the configuration files inside that same folder, which means that it won't conflict with other versions of Dolphin if you have that installed on your computer. And that also means that this folder will be portable, which means you can put it on other computers and it'll work fine. And then finally, it's going to ask you whether or not you want to quick launch this game every time you open up Prime Hack Updater. Because we're only concerned with Metroid Prime Trilogy, I'm going to hit yes here. And so as soon as you press yes, it's actually going to boot up the game. As you'll see, you'll get a dolphin window as well as the window of the game itself. It'll give you a warning here to make sure that you use the default controls. We are going to use those, so no problem. So let's go ahead and close out the game here and do a little bit of configuration to make sure everything works smoothly. First, I recommend that you add the actual Metroid Prime Trilogy game directly to the Dolphin version too. That way you can access it from here within the Dolphin menu. And next, we're going to add those HD interface textures that we downloaded earlier. You can see them here, they're still zipped. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to extract them to the same folder. And a couple things will pop up. You'll have a readme file that'll walk you through the instructions. And then two folders, one called R3M and the other one called Extras. And let's make a second window on the other side because we're going to drag these into a special location. As you can see, it still has the R3M and extra folders. They're just in a different order because they've re-alphabetized. Either way, what we want to do is go into the user folder, then load, and then textures. And then you just want to drag over that R3M folder altogether. Now within the extras folders, there's going to be a couple optional things that you can add to your game. For example, if you're going to be using keyboard and mouse controls on your Windows PC, you can actually swap out the icons so that they make sense in the context of a mouse and keyboard. 
As you can see here, it's showing the keyboard and mouse buttons in the on-screen display. So this is kind of neat if you're going to use keyboard and mouse. Now I'm going to use dual analog sticks with the controller, so I'm not going to use this one. But I am going to use the next one. This one's called Small Crosshair. If you open it up, you can actually see the preview picture here and get an idea of what it's going to look like. And I do like this nice little crosshair, so we are going to use it. All you have to do is open up this R3M folder and then take that subfolder and move it into the other R3M folder. Think of the one on the right as like your master folder for textures. And so if you want to use any of these other extras, you just kind of rinse and repeat. For example, there's an option here to improve the space textures in the beginning of Metroid Prime. This one's going to improve Samus's face, so I'm going to move that one over as well. And then you can also replace that splash screen that you get at the beginning of the game with this picture instead, and it looks pretty nice. Anyway, that's how you add those extras. Now another thing you might want to do is add this game to the desktop of your Windows computer. And that's pretty easy too. You could just make a shortcut to the Prime Hack updater and put that on your desktop. And of course you could rename it or whatever else you'd like to do. But there's also a trick within Dolphin to right click on the game and then just select add shortcut to desktop. So there are two different ways to access the game directly on your desktop. Okay, let's get into the configuration here and start actually setting things up. There's not a lot you can do within the config thing, but for example you could enable cheats if you wanted to use something like that. Other than that, most of the regular configuration don't need to be messed with. But there are quite a few things you can do within graphics. For example, it should default to the DirectX 11 backend, and that is what the PrimeHacks team recommends for this fork of Dolphin. These other options you can leave to auto, and then I do recommend starting it up in full screen. That's going to give you a more immersive experience. And you can also turn on the frames per second if you want. I'm actually going to leave it off because I don't want to be looking at numbers. I just want to focus on the game. And I know that with these Intel graphics drivers, I do have some issues with screen tearing. So I am going to turn on VSync. The computer is powerful enough to handle it. So I think it'll be fine. For internal resolution, I'm going to turn everything up to 1080p here. So a 3x resolution. As far as anti-aliasing and things like that, I'm not really going to mess with it because we're going to be introducing high definition textures here in a second. Now under advanced, make Make sure that you go here and select load custom textures. And if you have a lot of RAM, you could also select prefetch custom textures. This will load all the textures into the RAM at startup, but you are going to need at least 16 if not 32 gigs of RAM to really handle that. So maybe try turning it on and if it doesn't work out, then turn it back off. And finally, there is also a PrimeHack specific graphics tab. And you could do some small tweaks here like field of view, but I actually think it's better to do that when you're actually in a game. So I'm not going to mess with anything here. We're just going to leave it as is. And finally, you can also go in here and adjust the controllers. Now, initially, I'm actually just going to use keyboard and mouse to kind of demonstrate this. And so because of that, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to keep it at the defaults. But here's where you'll go to actually see how everything has been pre-mapped. And they've done it pretty thoughtfully. So let's start up the game and get a feel for how it looks. And it's already looking pretty nice at 1080p. And as you can see, it has like the improved space that we added as an extra texture. Now, we haven't even added the HD textures yet. This is just running at 1080p. But as you can see, keyboard and mouse are running great. So now let's go into those graphics graphic settings here and adjust the field of view. This is going to allow you to see more of the game as you're playing. And the default is 60, but for this one you can actually go up into the 90s. But I don't know about you, but to me it feels a little bit disorienting. And so I'm going to keep it at just the regular 60 that's available in the original version of the game. And also I'm going to plug in a controller here and remap this for dual analog stick gameplay. All you have to do is select gamepad and then select however you would like to map your controls. Personally, I like to use my right trigger as the shoot button and then the left trigger as my lock. So more typical of a modern first person shooter control setup. Anyway, I recommend going through here, taking your time and setting up your ideal control scheme. I'll leave a screenshot of this in my written guide, which you'll find linked in the video description. And so yeah, now I'm playing the game with dual analog stick controls and it feels great, nice and smooth. I love the fact that it has those small crosshairs because if you've ever played the Wii version of this game, the default crosshairs are just obnoxiously large. Okay, now let's jump into the last section that we're going to tweak with this game. We're going to add HD textures. And I'll have all this linked in my written guide, but essentially you just want to go to this page here and then download the trilogy pack. It's going to be over 5 gigs, so plan accordingly. It'll take probably 10-20 minutes to download altogether. And once you have it downloaded, it's actually very easy to set up. We're going to extract the zip file into a file of its own. This also will take a while to unzip. And once we've unzipped it, we can then delete that zip file to save a little bit of space. Now let's go ahead and make another two window setup here and go back into that same section, user, load, textures, R3M. 
And within here, all you have to do is just grab all the files that are in the R3M folder of this texture pack and then move them over into that main one. And we're actually good to go. We can delete the Trilogy folder altogether at this point. Now, all told, once you have all this stuff installed, the game itself is going to be about 25 gigs altogether. So make sure you have enough space to be able to handle this game. That's about the size of a mid-range PC game at this point, but that does make sense because this is three games in one. And one thing I did find is that because this has so many HD textures, the prefetch thing here would actually make my computer crash, so I am going to turn this one off. Even though I have 16 gigs, it's just not enough. Okay, so back in the game here, this is with the HD textures. And at first I thought, man, I don't even think this actually worked. It seems very similar to what it looked like before. But it is in fact showing HD textures. Let me show you a quick test here to see what I'm talking about. If we focus on one area of the wall here, and then we toggle on and off the custom textures, you can see how blurry things get when we turn this off. And I think as you're playing, the distinction is going to be a little bit subtle, but once you kind of see the contrast like you are here, it definitely makes it worth it. Now granted, it's going to add an additional 5 plus gigs to your storage space, but I do think it's worth it personally. Either way, yeah, we're actually fully set up at this point. We have HD textures, HD menus, as well as these nice configured controls for either dual analog or keyboard and mouse gameplay. And like I mentioned earlier in this video, because we set everything into portable mode, that means that this entire setup is completely portable. That means your configurations, your saves, and your save states are all going to be contained within this one folder here. Which means that you can move this folder onto other Windows devices and have the same setup, including your saves on other platforms. So for example, here is my Aya Neo Next. And when first opening up PrimeHack Updater, it doesn't recognize the location of my game file, and that's because it's using a different letter for the directory. So it's as simple as just going through and finding that game file again, and then all the other settings are going to carry over. As you can see here, it's showing that splash screen instead of the Wii one, which means that the textures are working too. Now the only other thing I did have to do is remap the controls, and that makes sense too, because the Aya Neo controls are going to be different than the Xbox controller on my regular PC. But either way, yes, as you can see here, I was able to jump into my save game, I have my HD textures, and all that stuff is carried over. And playing it in handheld mode like this is exactly what I've been hoping for all of these years. At this point, I kind of don't really care if Nintendo ever makes a Switch remaster, because this one's great on its own. Anyway, yeah, that's about it for this video here. I just wanted to show you how to set up PrimeHack as well as to import those HD textures. When you put these elements together, it does create an entirely new gaming experience. At this point, I'm about 25% through the original Metroid Prime on my Aya Neo Next, and I've never had more fun with this game ever before. So let me know what you think in the comments below. This is actually not a very new thing. This has been around for a couple years at this point, but it's new to me and I thought it might be new to you too. So let me know in the comments below, is this something you're interested in setting up for yourself? And of course, check out the written guide that I have in the video description, which will walk you through this whole process with links and all that other stuff. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.